The Kohen Hagadol asked, Are these the accusations true? And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to Abram and a Yehu in Mesopotamia before he lived in Haran and said to him, Leave your land and your family and go into the land that I will show you. So he left the land of the Kastim and lived in Haran. After his father died, God made him move to this land where you are living now. He gave him no inheritance in it, not even space for one foot. Yet he promised to give it to him as a possession and to his descendants after him, even though at the time he was childless. What God said to him was, Your descendants will be aliens in a foreign land, where they will be in slavery and oppressed for 400 years. But I will judge the nation that enslaves them, God said, and afterwards they will leave and worship me in this place. And he gave him Brit Malah. So he became the father of Yitzhak and did his Brit Malah on the eighth day. And Yitzhak became the father of Yaakov, and Yaakov became the father of the twelve patriarchs. Now the, pa now the patriarchs grew jealous of Yosef and sold him into slavery in Egypt. But Adonai was with him. He rescued him from all his troubles and gave him favor and wisdom before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who appointed him chief administrator over Egypt and over all his household. Now there came a famine that caused much suffering throughout Egypt and Canaan. But when Yaakov heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent our fathers there the first time. The second time, Yosef revealed his identity to his brothers in Yosef. Yosef's family became known to Pharaoh. Yosef then sent for his father Yaakov and all his relatives, 75 people. And Yaakov went down to Egypt. There he died, as did our other ancestors. Their bodies were removed to Shechem and buried in the tomb of Abraham, had brought from the family of Hamor in Shechem for a certain sum of money. As the time drew near for, for the fulfillment of the promise God had made to Abraham, the number of our people in Egypt increased greatly, until there arose another king over Egypt who had no knowledge of Yosef. With cruel cunning, this man forced our fathers to put their newborn babies outside their home so that they would not survive. It was when Moshe was born, and he was beautiful in God's sight. For three months he was reared in his father's house, and when he was put out on his home, Father's, Pharaoh's daughter took him and brought him up her, as her own. So Moshe was trained in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and became both a powerful speaker and a man of action. But when he was 40 years old, a thought came to him to visit his brothers, the people of Israel. On seeing one of them being mistreated, he went to his defense and took revenge by striking down the Egyptian. He supposed his brothers would understand that God was using him to rescue them, but they didn't understand. When he, appear, when he appeared the next day as they were fighting and tried to make peace between them by saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you want to hurt each other? The one who was mistreating his fellow pushed Moshe away and said, Who made you the ruler and judge over us? Do you want to kill me? the way you killed the Egyptian yesterday? On hearing this, Moshe fled the country and became an exile in the land of Midian, for he had two sons. After 40 more years, an angel appeared to him in the desert near Mount Sinai, in the flames of a burning thorn bush. When Moshe saw this, he was amazed at the sight. And as he approached to get a better look, there came the voice of Adonai, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. But Moshe trembled with fear and didn't dare to look. Adonai said to him, Take off your sandals, because the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have clearly seen how my people are being oppressed in Egypt. I have heard their cry, and I have come down to rescue them. And now I will send you to Egypt. This Moshe, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge, is the very one whom God sent as both ruler and ransomer by means of an angel that appeared to him in the thorn bush. 
This man led them out, performed miracles and signs in Egypt and the Red Sea in the wilderness for 40 years. This is the Moshe who said to the people of Israel, God will raise up a prophet like me from among your brothers. This is the man who was in the assembly in the wilderness, accompanied by the angel that had spoken to him on Mount Sinai and by our fathers, the man who was given living words to pass on to us. But our fathers did not want to obey him. On the contrary, they rejected him and in their hearts turned to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make us some gods to lead us, because this Moshe who led us out of Egypt, we don't know what will become of him. That was when they made an idol in the shape of a calf and offered a sacrifice to it and held celebration in honor of what they had made with their own hands. So God turned away from them and gave them over to worship the stars. As has been written in the book of the prophets, people of Israel, it was not to me that you offered slaughtered animals and sacrificed for 40 years in the wilderness. No, you carried the tent of Molech, the star of your god Raphan, the idols you made, so that you could worship them. Therefore, I will send you into exile beyond Babel. Our fathers had the tent of of witness in the wilderness. It had been made just as God, who spoke to Moshe, had ordered it made, according to the pattern Moshe had seen. Later on, our fathers who had received it brought it into Yeshua. When they took the land away from the nations that God drove out before them, so it was until the days of David. He enjoyed God's favor and asked if he might provide a dwelling place for God of Yaakov. And Shlomo built it, did build him a house. But Ha Elyon does not live in places made by hand. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, says Adonai, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house could you build for me? What kind of place could you devise for my rest? Didn't I myself make all these things? Stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears. You continually oppose the Ruach HaKodesh. You do the same things your fathers did. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? They killed those who told in advance about the coming of the Zadik. Now you have become his betrayers and murderers, you who received the Torah as having been delivered by angels, but do not keep it. On hearing these things, they were cut to their hearts and grind their teeth at him. But he, full of the Ruach HaKodesh, looked up to heaven and saw God's Shikna, with Yeshua standing at the right hand of God. Look, he exclaimed, I see heaven opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they began yelling at the top of their voices so that they wouldn't have to hear him. And with one accord, they rushed him, threw him outside of the city, began stoning him. And the witnesses laid down their coats at the feet of the young man named Shaul. As they were stoning him, Stephen called out to God, Lord Yeshua, receive my spirit. Then he kneeled down and shouted out, Lord, don't hold this sin against them. With that, he died. As Shaul gave his approval to his murder, starting with that day, they arose in intense persecutions against the Messianic community in Jerusalem. All but the emissaries were scattered through the regions of Yehuda and Shamron. Some godly men Stephen buried and mourned him deeply. But Shaul set out to destroy the Messianic community. Entering the house after house, he dragged off both men and women and handed them over to be put in prison. However, Those who were scattered announced the good news of the word wherever they went. Now Philip went down to the city of Shamron, in Shamron, was proclaiming the Messiah to them. And the crowds were paying close attention to what Philip said. As they heard and saw the miraculous signs he was doing, for many people were having unclean spirits dripping out of them, shrieking. Also, many paralytics and crippling persons are being healed, so that there was great joy in the city. But there was a man named Shimon in the city for whom for some time had been practicing magic, astonishing the nation of Shamron, claiming to be somebody great. Everybody had gave heed to him from the lowest to the highest, saying, This man is the power of God called the great power. They followed him because for his considerable time he had amazed them with his magic. But when he came to believe Philip 
as he announced the good news concerning the kingdom of God, the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, they were immersed, both men and women. Moreover, Shimon himself came to believe, and after being immersed, he attached himself closely to Philip and was amazed that he saw the miraculous signs and great power, great works of power that kept taking place. When the emissaries in Jerusalem heard that Shamron had received the word of God, they sent them Kepha and Yochanan, who came down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Ruach HaKodesh. For until then, they had, not come upon, they had not come upon any of them. They had only been immersed into the name of the Lord Yeshua. Then, as Kepha and Yochanan placed their hands on them, they received the Ruach HaKodesh. Shimon saw that the Spirit was given when the emissaries placed their hands on them, and he offered them money. Give this power to me too, he said, so that wherever I place my hands, I will receive the Ruach HaKodesh. But Kepha said to him, your silver and your gold ruin with you and you with it, for thinking the free gift of God can be bought. You have no part, with, you have no part at all in this matter, because in the eyes of God, your heart is crooked. So repent of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord. Perhaps you will be forgiven for holding such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are extremely bitter and, ex and, com and completely under the control of sin. Shimon answered, pray to the Lord for me so that none of these things you have spoken about will happen to me. Then after giving a thorough witness and speaking the word of the Lord, Ketha and Yochanan started back to Jerusalem, announcing the good news to many villages in Shamron. And an angel of Adonai said to Philip, Get up and go southward on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Aza, the desert road. So he got up and went. On his way, he caught sight of an Ethiopian, a eunuch, who was minister in charge of all the treasures of Kendal, or queen of Ethiopia. He had been to Jerusalem to worship, and now, as he was returning home, he was sitting in a chariot reading the prophet Yeshayahu. The spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and stay close to him. As Philip ran up, he heard the Ethiopian reading from Yeshayahu the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? He asked. How can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. And he invited Philip to climb up and sit with him. Now the portion of the Tanakh that he was reading was this. He was like a sheep led to be slaughtered, like a lamb silent before the shears. He did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and denied justice. Who will tell about his descendants, since his life has been taken from the earth? The eunuch said to Philip, Here's my question to you. Is the prophet talking about himself or somebody else? Then Philip started to speak. Beginning with that passage, he went on to tell him the good news of Yeshua. About that, as they were going down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, here's some water. Is there any reason why I shouldn't be immersed? He ordered the chariot to stop. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down to the water, and Philip immersed him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and he continued on his way, full of joy. But Philip showed up at Ashdod and continued proclaiming the good news as he went through all the towns until they came to Caesarea. Meanwhile, Shaul, still breathing murderous threats against the Lord's Talmudim, went to the Kohen Haggadol and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus authorizing him to arrest any people he might find, whether men or women, who belonged to the way, and bring them back to Rushlein. He was on the road nearing Damascus when suddenly a light from heaven flashed all around him, falling to the ground. He heard a voice say to him, Shaul, Shaul, why do you keep persecuting me? Sir, who are you? He asked. I am Yeshua. You are persecuting me. But get up and go into the city and you would be told what to do. The men traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. They helped Shaul get up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So leading him by the hand, he brought him to Damasik. In three days, he remained unable to see. He neither ate nor drank. There was the Talmud in Damasik, Hananiah by name. And in a vision, the Lord said to him, Hananiah, he said, here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the straight street, to Yehuda's house, and ask for a man from, a man from Tarshish named Shaul, for he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Hananiah coming in and placing his hands on him to restore his sight. But Hananiah answered, Lord, many have told me about this man. 
how much harm he has done to your people in Yerushalayim. And here he has a warrant from the head Kohenim to arrest everyone who calls on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, because this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name to the nations, even to their kings and to the sons of Israel as well. For I myself will show him how much he will have to suffer on my account, my name. So Hananiah left and went into the house, placing his hands on him, said, Brother Shaul, the Lord, Yeshua, the one who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so you may see again and be filled with the Ruach Kakodesh. In that moment, something like scales fell away from Shaul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was immersed. Then he ate some food and regained his strength. Shaul spent some days with the Talmudim in Damascus, and immediately he began proclaiming in the synagogues that Yeshua is the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed. They asked, isn't he the man in Jerusalem who is trying to destroy the people who call on his name? In fact, isn't that why he came here, to arrest them and bring them back to the head Kohenim? But Shaul was being filled with more and more of the power, was creating filled more and more with power and was creating an uproar among the Jews living in Damascus with proofs that Yeshua is the Messiah. Quite some time later, the non-believing Jews gathered together and made plans to kill him, but their plot became known to Shaul. They were watching the gates day and night in order to do away with him, but under cover by night, his Talmudim took him and led him down the city wall, lowering him in a large basket. On reaching Yerushalayim, he tried to join the Talmudim, but they were afraid of him. They didn't believe that he was a Talmud. However, Barnaba got hold of him and took him to the emissaries. He told him how Shaul had been, had seen the Lord while traveling, that the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus Shaul had spoken out boldly in the name of Yeshua. So he remained with them and went all over Yerushalayim, continued to speak boldly in the name of the Lord. He talked and debated with the Greek-speaking Jews, and they began making attempts to kill him. When all the brothers learned of it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him away to Tarsus. Then the Messiaic community through Yehuda, the Gilau, the Shamron, enjoyed peace and was built up. They lived in the fear of the Lord with the counsel of the Ruch HaKodesh, and their numbers kept multiplying. As Kepha traveled around the countryside, he came down to the believers in Lud. There he found a man named Aranus who had laid bedridden for eight years because he was paralyzed. Kepha said to him, Aranus, Yeshua the Messiah is healing you. Get up and make your bed. Everyone living in Lud and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now in Yafo, there was a Talmud, Talmudah named Tevia, which means gazelle. She was always doing Zedekah and other good deeds. It happened that just at that time, she, she got sick and died. After washing her, she laid her in an up room. In the upstairs room, Lud is near Yaffa. And the Talmud had heard that Kepha was there. So he went two men with him and urged him, Please, come to us without delay. Kepha got up and went with them. When he arrived, he led them to the upstairs room. All the windows stood by him sobbing and showing all the distress, all the dresses and coats Tevia had made while she was still with them. But Kepha put them all outside, kneeled down, and prayed. Then turning to the body, he said, Tavia, get up! She opened her eyes, and seeing Kepha, she sat up. He offered her his hand and helped her to her feet. Then, calling the believers and the widows, he presented her to them alive. This became known all over Yafo, and many people put their trust in Yeshua. Kepha stayed up in Yafo for some time, a man named Shimon, a leather tanner. 